Never underestimate a human's propensity for violence. They may preach peace. Some say they are the greatest brokers of peace in the galaxy. And while that may be true, for a species that is always the first to try to de-escalate a situation from violence, they are very good at it. It is often said a human can find 20 different ways to use any given object as a weapon, and I believe it. I was serving in the Second War of Secession, on the warship Pandora's Curiosity. We had been smuggling vital intel to the forward operating base, on Karaya Prime, when by possibly the worst case of bad luck in history, we had been torn out of subspace by the main enemy fleet. We were alone against a fleet nearly 70,000 strong. We tried running, but they tore through our shields in a matter of seconds. Captain, we're being ripped apart here. We need to beam our intel to the outpost, screamed the second lieutenant. I was communications officer at the time. Klaxons blared all around us. Several bridge crew were working to put out fires, where a hydraulics line had been severed. Smoke nearly choked us out. No, the captain yelled back. We can't afford to let it be intercepted. Captain Braxton had been the first human captain I had served under, and while he was hard, he was fair. And he was level-headed. I don't think I had ever seen him this stressed. I don't know if it was stress, but he had a glint in his eyes. I won't claim to be an expert on human mannerisms, but I don't think it was a healthy glint. We watched him chew on his thumb while we waited for his orders, a habit I had observed in several humans. However, after a few more hits from the enemy fleet, he started to smile. I sincerely hoped he had a plan. Captain Braxton turned back towards the helmsman. Ensign, swing us around and start charging the subspace drive. But sir... All of our weapons are down. We have nothing to defend ourselves with. The helmsman hollered back. Now the captain chuckled darkly. There's no such thing as an unarmed spaceship, he said. After a few seconds, we went back to our duties, and I watched on the view screen as we turned to face the enemy. The captain activated the intercom. Attention all crew, abandon ship. Sir, the helmsman yelled back. The subspace drive has sustained too much damage. If we leave it on any further, it'll tear the ship apart. That's just what I'm counting on, he said, punching in coordinates near the centre of the enemy fleet. Now I believe I just gave the order to abandon ship. That means you all as well. Just then, we all heard the dull thumping of escape pods being launched. But sir, a bridge officer started. Go, he screamed. We all looked at each other and then started hauling it to the escape pods. As I left, I turned to see the captain. He wore a manic grin, something unbecoming of the man I knew. He looked like an entirely different person. I was then dragged out by a fellow crewmate. We ran past hallways full of endless debris, exploded consoles and scars in the ship's hull, with force fills holding the crawl vacuum of space at bay. We eventually made it to an escape pod, strapped it in and launched. I watched as the ship dropped away from under us, and we tried to avoid getting picked off by the fleet. It was then Captain Braxton used the last remaining power to accelerate the ship up near the speed of light. Now I don't know if any of you have seen 50,000 tons of spaceship impact at near light speed, but the energy released was enormous. The ship impacted a battle cruiser near the middle of the pack. We were immediately assaulted with a flash of light greater than a thousand suns, brighter than anything I have ever seen in my entire life. The force of the impact and subsequent energy release shredded the shields of nearby ships, and then destroyed them as well. The shockwave expanded out at the speed of light, obliterating thousands of ships in its wake. It was pretty weak when it reached us, but it still threw us off course and strained our pod's meager shields and hull. I looked back, and in the blink of an eye, the entire enemy fleet had been decimated. Ships that weren't vaporized outright were in pieces, or heavily damaged and without power, drifting. I would later learn that nearly 70% of the fleet had been destroyed outright, and the rest had been damaged to varying degrees. 
Captain Braxton was promoted to Admiral post-mortem, and we were picked up eight hours later by a rescue fleet. The information got to the forward operating base, and our mission was successful. When I asked, I learned this sort of attack had a dedicated name in human languages. It was called a kamikaze, or suicide attack, and humans had used it at various points in their history. I was told it was the ultimate form of denial. I eventually went back to the service, but was never posted with another human captain after that. I still don't know if that's a good or bad thing. 